Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and to another episode of the bag collection series. One of the last, I think, unless we like round back up again at the end. And today we're covering one of my very, very favorite sort of ready to wear brands, kind of street brands these days, Balenciaga. You know, the ones that, the ones, the people that make the sneakers that look like socks. I, I made a dad joke and we just started. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. But before we delve into the history of the house and my little collection, I thought we would give a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Samorga. Now, if you are not familiar with Samorga bag organizers, I'm about to rock your world, especially if you're like a bag head like me. I don't know about you, but there are bags in my collections that are just a mess, like they're destined to be a mess. One, because the lining is too pale and it's like for sure gonna get stained by a lipstick or a pen or something down the line. And two, sometimes a bucket bag, there's certain formats of bags that are just like, you will lose, it's just, it's like Mary Poppins' bag. You just never, you'll never find anything in there. It's just never ending. And that's when these come in handy. So Samorga make these beautiful felt bag inserts since 2010. They were the original company to make these felt bag inserts and they're kind of the bomb. Let me show you. Starting with this guy that I've been holding up this whole time at the book tote insert. I don't know about you guys, but travel bags like this one, though they're super convenient to have a big shopper tote because they are made of like a canvas or in this case, a denim material. Again, kind of tough to protect on the inside. It's also just one giant bag with no compartments and no zipper pocket, which you know, isn't always the safest. And that's when this bad boy comes in. There is a removable zipper pocket. So if you want to close it shut, let's say you want to put it in an overhead compartment, which has happened to me a hundred times. And uh, this one's too tall. So I always tend to put it kind of on its side and then everything falls up, it's a big old mess. Now that will officially never happen again. Also, if you open it up, I've got some little inner side pockets uh, to make like valuables easy to access. Also love this little round circular pocket at the bottom for anything that needs to be like held upright that you don't want to have any spillage. It's super, super convenient. Uh, I'm gonna organize this one right away. The reason I originally discovered Samorga is because I wanted to make sure that these guys stayed protected. So I went online and picked some matching inserts that would make sure that the leather wouldn't get, again, damaged on the inside. And also again, to add a little extra organizational space. First up for my Kelly, I got this adorable little turtle turquoise insert. By the way, it's incredible. They have like a good trillion colors and you can uh, customize the different kind of pockets on the inside of your organizer. And of course, for my Birkin 30, I had to get a little sort of neutral toned uh, felt insert as well. Uh, I didn't add any like custom compartments, but you can easily request them to make sure that all of your needs are covered. And the color match is pretty good. And finally, I just got this little pink insert for you guessed it, my little Lady Delight. If you guys own a Lady Dior, you know that the inside is very precocious because it is usually either in this case sort of a canvas material or even a suede on the inside which is bound to get damaged somewhere along the road. So these felt inserts come in very handy and the color is just adorable. Let me put this new pink one in my new Dior. There's like no better feeling. It's so satisfying that it's like a perfect fit. Look how cute that is. Also, of course, Samorga makes inserts for a plethora of different brands and different bag models throughout the brands, different sizes for those bags. Like, these just bring me so much joy. So thank you so much, Samorga, for sponsoring this video. So now time for Balenciaga. So funny enough, when you think of Balenciaga, especially in recent year, you think more a little bit more streetwear. Uh, similar to Vêtements, uh, they've really picked up on those novel cues and recent trends and ran with them. But the history of the house goes back over a hundred years in Spain and their history is rooted in couture and not at all in trendy streetwear. The brand was founded in 1917 by Cristobal Balenciaga, who was widely regarded as one of the best couturiers and creators of all time. Even one of his rivals at the time, Christian Dior, deemed him the master of us all. So, I mean, it's pretty high praise coming from one of the greatest designers of all time. So, though the brand's history, of course, is rooted in Spain, the first boutique was opened in San Sebastian, there was one in Barcelona, in Madrid, the aristocracy, the, the Spanish royal family, family wore his garments. Because of the Spanish Civil War, he had to close and relocated in Paris, which I feel is why so many of us have Balenciaga penned as a French fashion house. After opening his store on Avenue Georges V in 1937, it only took a couple years for the French press to call the brand revolutionary and for his designs to be highly sought after, to the point where customers risked going to Europe during the Second World War just to, just to get access to his garments. And even though that sounds like a lot of praise, he didn't actually pick up steam until after the war from a perspective anyways. His lines became a lot more sleek uh, and modern. 
and kind of stepped away from the trend of the time and that classic sort of Christian Dior silhouette, the hourglass silhouette. He would broaden the shoulders, um, remove the waist completely. He really liked playing with proportions and changing the, the classic silhouettes that had become so deeply rooted in ladies' fashion. I mean, in the 50s, he created garments and styles that we still wear to this day, from like the tunic dress to the shirt dress to high-waisted baby doll dresses. I believe he even created like an empire waist. Whole new silhouette for the time. And it was modern and it was cool and I feel like we still feel that essence of the brand to this day. Now, I know I always talk about designers and creative directors that have gone through the house, but it's incredible to think about Cristobal's protégés because he has a long list of people that are well-regarded as some of the best designers of all time, and they all kind of learned from him. You've got Oscar de la Renta, Emmanuel Angaro, and of course, uh, like his right-hand man, Hubert de Givenchy, from, you know, the house of Givenchy. In 1968, Cristobal closed his fashion house right before uh, he passed away in the early 70s, and the house lay dormant until 1986, when it reopened its doors and welcomed new designers, like Nicolas Gersquet, Alexander Wang, of course, and now the era of Demna. What's for certain is that Balenciaga was always way ahead of his time, and that modern spirit, those clean, crisp lines, uh, is still really well represented in the brand to this day. I mean, what a history, what incredible names have gone through Balenciaga over the years, and I feel like it deserves a little bit more credit than we give it sometimes. And on that note, without further ado, my favorite line, uh, let's get into the little wonders, there's not too many of them, that I've had the chance to collect uh, from Balenciaga over the years. All right, so first up, let's start with my newest baby. The smallest size of the Balenciaga Ville uh, top handle bag, the double XS. Now, do I even need to tell you guys why I wanted this bag? You guys know how I feel about novelty. You know how I can't let go of my childhood, apparently. So this was kind of a no-brainer. Well, I mean, it wasn't a no-brainer, but I, I just I had a really big soft spot for it. I do love the shape of these bags, even in their more like traditional iterations and like more classic colorways. It really reminds me a little bit of like an Alma, which I think is a very classic sort of shape and uh, lends itself to so many different situations. This guy came in pink and black, and of course the classic kitty white, white bag, uh, the little laces. I have a really deep, deep rooted love for Balenciaga trainers and sneakers. So when I saw that same little lace <laughs> as whiskers on this bag, I couldn't help myself. It pulled at my heartstrings. Has a great little crossbody strap. It'd be great with this outfit right now. Definitely more of, a, again, a novel take on the style, but I just thought it was adorable. And after seeing it on the runway, I knew that I would like wrestle with the decision of getting it or not. I originally thought they were only gonna make it in the very big sizes, but when I saw this teeny weeny little guy, I just figured it was more wearable than kind of a big airport bag with a giant Hello Kitty face on it. So I was so happy to get my hands on it. And uh, yeah, maybe I wear this out of the house today. <laughs> Next up, a bag that has gotten an incredible amount of wear from me, kind of unexpectedly. Oh, it's full right now. <laughs> the Balenciaga Bazaar Shopper. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the first iteration of these bags came with stripes and it kind of was reminiscent of like those reusable totes that you get from like different stores like Ikea and that sort of thing. And those never really spoke to me, but when I was at, I think also I got it at the outlet. So that was a little extra incentive to pick it up because the price point was so great. But when I saw this ginormous patent red moment, I could not help myself. It is super duper convenient for, again, a weekender bag, travel bag, a carry-on. You could fit your laptop in it super duper easily. Uh, it's really become my road bag over the years. Pretty durable as well because it is patent, so you don't have to worry too much about spills and things like that. I got a cute little sequin Mickey charm in Tokyo Disney that has been living on it ever since. It is heavily stuffed at the moment, but there is a couple little uh, pockets on each side for kind of like your valuables, but it is a really deep bag. Could probably use a Samorga organizer if you ask me but it really fits it all and it's uh, super lovely to travel with. No crossbody straps, so you gotta be really strong in your hand and your crook of the arm, but I do not regret this one at all. Again, I got it at a great price. Red Patent to me is a classic. I love it very much. Uh, red is my pop of color, my chosen pop of color, so this bag was kind of a no-brainer to me and I do not regret it one bit. It's, uh, it's seen a lot of the world. <laughs> Now this is kind of surprising because the Bizarre Tote was never like a coup de coeur of mine, like a bag that I thought I would love forever, but two of my four Balenciaga bags are in fact Bizarre Totes. This guy was released, it says Balenciaga all over it by the way, the logos uh, are diagonal, kind of spread throughout, and it came out around the same time as those sweaters, those legendary knits with again the logos etched throughout. Uh, they all came out around the same time and I just loved, I thought it was going to be kind of a seasonal thing, I didn't realize that they would keep making it because it was super well received, but at the time I thought this was just such such a fun piece. I have no bags that are this structured, truly like a rectangular shape. This one's also really great for travel, a little bit smaller, a little bit more convenient. And it does have 
that crossbody strap, which is great. Unfortunately, I bought this bag full price on Essence and then it went on sale. So that always hurts a little bit, but I don't regret it. That being said, I, I do have the matching boots that I did get on sale, however. So that kind of made it all better and worthwhile. I just think it's a classic, but it's a lot of fun. And I guess I like the shape of this bag because I mean, I've got two of them. So you got to assume that, that, I'm, <laughs> that I'm drawn to the design somehow. And the leather is really beautiful on this guy. I don't think I'll be buying another uh, Bazaar shop or tote, but I'm really happy with the two that I have. And they've been incredibly handy over the years. And we've already made it to the last bag of my little collection. And funny enough, yeah, shape looks familiar. So I never owned sort of the most classic bag from Balenciaga, the, the city tote, I believe it's called. It's just called the city bag. Kind of the Mary Kate Olsen bag, if you ask me. What celebrity did not have that bag in every color in like the early 2000s? I feel like it was everywhere. I don't know how I don't own one. I've got very strong self-control apparently because usually that influences me. <laughs> but years later, I did end up with something kind of reminiscent of the city bag the papier tote. It's got those same sort of details as the city bag. I think they always, they also call it the motorcycle bag, but this was kind of a newer take on it at the time. This one is in an exotic skin. The story from when I got it is actually a lot more fun than the bag itself, I think, though this is pretty fun actually. This got zippers on the side. Uh, my mother and I were just going to lunch one day. We had no plans. We we're just gonna go to a quick lunch and then that was it, just say hello. And we ended up at the department store after a boozy lunch. And I mean, the rest as they say is history. I don't remember it that well for obvious reasons, but I believe Peter and my dad got a call at the end of the day asking for a ride home and also like with a pretty lengthy apology <laughs> because we had a couple shopping bags and this was in one of them. Uh, I just, it was love at first sight. I saw it in the window. I love the color. It has changed color since though. It's a lot yellower. Yellower now? That's not a word. <laughs> it's got a yellow tint to it now, but it was originally this beautiful sort of very, very cool tone gray uh, and way. I actually it kind of still looks that way on the monitor, but it's, it's just a really, really pretty exceptional bag. And uh, I wore it the crap out of it. So even though it doesn't come out as often these days, it definitely is an exceptional piece in my collection and the memories behind it make it that much sweeter. And on that note, thus concludes uh, the Balenciaga portion of my bag collection series. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Seeing how much you guys like these videos really warms my heart and makes me want to film more for you. Of course, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when my next video goes up, uh, usually every Friday. Also, don't forget to let me know in the comment box below what you want to see next week and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Another big thank you to Samorga for sponsoring this video. Go check them out. I've linked them in the description box below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.